Welcome to this video. Today, you're going to learn the difference between rise and raise. This is a question that a student has submitted and it's a great question because I know this confuses students, but I have a very easy explanation for you. Of course, I'm Jennifer from j4senglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you sound like a fluent, confident, natural English speaker. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. Now, let's dive in with this video. Let's talk about the difference between rise and raise. Both of these are verbs and they're both used to talk about the increase. So something going up. The difference between these two verbs is the sentence structure and how they're formed grammatically because raise is a transitive verb. Don't let that confuse you. The only thing it means is that it requires a direct object. For example, in a classroom, the teacher could say, if you have any questions, please raise. Now, hmm. Is this sentence correct or incorrect? Well, it's incorrect because we didn't identify the direct object. So remember, after raise, you always raise something. So in this case, the teacher would need to say, if you have any questions, please raise your hand. So you need to identify the something, which is the direct object. In this case, the thing that is going up, increasing, is your hand. Please raise your hand. The verb rise, on the other hand, is an intransitive verb, which means it doesn't require a direct object. Now, that simply means that we don't have to identify a something after the verb rise, we can have a period or a comma. We can end that part of the sentence. For example, I could say the water level rose. The water level rose. So of course the water level went up. Rose is simply the past simple form of the verb rise. Rise is an irregular verb. It has an irregular past verb, which is rose. The water level rose. Now notice, I can end my sentence right there. I don't have to identify a something because it's intransitive. Now, going back to the verb raise, which is transitive, requires a direct object, I could say the government raised the minimum wage. The government raised, increased something. What did they increase? The minimum wage. So that means the minimum wage went up, it increased. The government raised, I need to identify the something. The government raised the minimum wage. And notice here, raise in the past form is a regular verb. We just add an ed to it. Now, taking that same sentence and thinking about rise, which is intransitive, I don't need a direct object. I could say the minimum wage rose. Remember, rose is just the past form. The minimum wage rose. Hmm. So remember, something raises something, but something rises. That's the sentence structure that you need to follow. Now, technically, these two can be used together. And I could say, we raise, okay, if I have the verb raise, I know I need something. We raise the flag. The flag goes up. We raise the flag when the sun rises. When the sun rises. So here, because I used rise, I can end my sentence with a period because I don't need to identify an object after the verb rise. And notice the verb tenses of this sentence. Both the verbs are in the present simple because this is a routine action. We raise the flag when the sun rises. 
So now you know exactly how to use the verbs raise and rise. Of course, it's your turn to practice. I want you to leave three sentences in the comments below. One with raise, remember, transitive, direct object. One with rise, intransitive, no direct object. And a bonus if you can form a sentence using both raise and rise in one sentence. That's a bonus. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. Now, before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4senglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying. All right, awesome job. I know this is a confusing topic. Don't let the transitive and intransitive confuse you. Just keep it simple and make sure you practice. That's the best way to feel confident using these expressions. Practice in the comments below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.